Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now this week we have a story of youth, fire and ambition. He's just 29 years old and he owns 35 buildings in Africa's richest city. He's a man who's lived life. He's laid bricks, he's sold down the telephone, he's travelled the world. We're talking about Jonathan Liebman, a young entrepreneur who is leading the regeneration of one of Africa's great cities, Johannesburg. Let's take a look at what he does. Propertuity is focused on developing mixed-use buildings that offer alternative lifestyles, workspaces and retail outlets. The company has contributed substantially to the regeneration efforts in and around the Johannesburg inner city. Uh, Propertuity is a development company and it's known for the development of the Maboneng precinct. So it was started in 2009 by Jonathan Liebman, who is our founder and CEO. And it was started when he decided to develop the building called Arts on Main. Um, when he started the company, it was completely a one-man show. So he did everything from development to construction to selling the properties to the marketing. And over the past four years, as Arts on Main has grown into Maboneng, um, the company has grown from Jonathan into 15 employees. We deal with property, but we deal with property in a very interesting way. For example, um, I'm the brand manager for Property, so I do a lot of things that wouldn't even exist in a property development company. We have a very considered and a very integrated approach to property development, and I think that's why we've been a lot more successful in the inner city. Property have been very focused on the development of the Maboneng Precinct, a regeneration area inside the CBD of Johannesburg. It's located if you, draw, if you draw a line from Apsa Towers to Ellis Park, it's kind of where those lines meet. We're in the southeastern corner of the city. And it was started with Arts on Main, and it's grown into over seven completed developments we're at now. And that's everything from artist studios to galleries to entertainment spaces to residential and commercial space. So, so in three years, it's grown to a community of over 1,500 people that are living and working in the, in the inner city, in, the spa in spaces that were empty before. So it's, that's what we do property development, but a lot of people have referred to us as community developers as well. Property have future plans to work on a project called Maboneng 2.0. Well, Property is very much focused on the development of Maboneng, but what we're working on now and we're releasing on the 1st of November is Maboneng 2.0 which will be an exhibition of our future plans for the next five years. It doesn't, it's not only about the buildings we've acquired, it's not only about the buildings we're gonna develop, but it's the plans that we've been working with, with urban architects and urban planners, and that's about creating spaces in between these buildings. So it's, it's talking to the green aspect, it's talking to uh, kind of lighting and interesting spaces that that kind of in, that kind of tie all these spaces together so that's going to be 2.0 and we're releasing that on the 1st of November with an interactive exhibition at Arts on Main well, with me in the studio I have the driving force behind all of this Jonathan Liebman the founder of Property. so Jonathan so um, you've got a lot going on down there in the middle of Johannesburg and this is a city where you grew up around yeah yeah i was born in johannesburg and then i actually moved to durban uh, when i was a couple of months old with my mother and my older brother and uh, i returned to johannesburg when i was 15 and finished my schooling here and uh, what sort of family do you come from i mean entrepreneurial family yeah i guess so i mean my mom had a clothing business when i was growing up um, and my father was a lawyer and then a banker and now he's um, got a really successful art foundation um, and my older brother has got his own business as well as my younger brother who's opened a clothing shop um, in Maboreng. So um, I think everybody around me are entrepreneurs. All my best friends um, are entrepreneurs. They have businesses in Australia and America, in Johannesburg as well. So I'm really connected to other people that are, are also driving the economy forward with entrepreneurship. So everybody understands you. So uh, fast forward when you were 17, 18, you up sticks and you went to London. Yeah, so when I was um, 17, I went with my four best friends to, uh, to London where I based myself and I kind of got involved in a few menial type jobs just to make enough money so that I could travel and expose myself to 
um, to other interesting things that were happening in the world. Um, I think at that stage, Johannesburg in South Africa kind of wasn't meeting my needs, so I was looking for something different. Um, so while I was in London, I, uh, I became a telesales uh, person. I was selling um, telephone packages for British Telecom um, until was like that? 11 o'clock at night. Um, it was pretty, pretty uh, scary initially, phoning people up, um, <laughs> kind of with n not much to sell. Um, but I learned the trade and eventually, uh, you know, I was kind of one of the top salespeople. Um, and then I decided to get my hands a bit more dirty and I started uh, learning the construction industry and started working as really a manual laborer on a construction site in Canary Wharf in London. Uh, the pay was a little bit better than telesales, so I was kind of moving up in the world. I mean, there are two tough jobs there. I mean, telesales, people tell me it's soul destroying, you know, yeah. you have to phone people up all the time. You must have had some terrific, terrible times there. Yeah, I mean, most of the people I was phoning were kind of like 65 plus. So a lot of them couldn't even hear me for the first three minutes. Um, and, uh, you know, once I'd really kind of uh, got them thinking about the product, I, my, my conversion rate was, was, was really high. But that, it's that first minute of the phone call where you, your, your um, rate of people putting the phone down is kind of like close to 90%. So it can be soul destroying. <laughs> and, the, and the brick trade as well, that's not uh, an easy one. You need yeah, strong I mean, arms Yeah, that, that kept me nice and fit. Um, and the good thing about that was that, you know, we could work overtime. So we were working from like 6 in the morning until um, 11 at night and we were earning enough money so that we could see the world. So from there, I, I, was, I managed to see, I think, another 17 countries uh, from Europe to the Middle East to America. So it was and a really good uh, way for me to earn money at a young age and see the world. What did you think that did for you? I mean, the, all these places you went yeah. to. I think seeing, um, you know, the urban parts of, of, of first world countries made me understand that there was something um, different uh, that could be introduced to the South African market. Um, not just a suburban life, but rather uh, a proper integrated urban lifestyle that could uh, make sense for young people. Um, so, so when I came back to South Africa um, after that year, year of traveling, I felt that there was something missing here and then had an experience to draw on um, um, so that I could start thinking of how I could contribute to a new offering in this country. And um, before we get there, I mean, you were always an early starter. You said you, you bought your first property when you were 18. Yeah. I mean, most people can't even find the rent at that age. And secondly, you ran a string when you were in London of 17 laundries. Well, the laundries were actually um, all around Johannesburg. Oh, um, Johannesburg, so, sorry. Um, yeah, so I started a laundry business with a best mate of mine, and um, we took it from one laundry to 17 laundries within like a kind of two year period, so we were growing really quickly. Um, I think what, I, what was interesting for me in that business was um, finding locations. So I'm very environment sensitive and I, I, I'm interested in um, identifying opportunities within neighborhoods. So that taught me how to, how to look for those opportunities um, and also just gave me really good on the ground experience of, um, of trading. Um, and uh, yeah, so after that, I, I, that's when I realized that um, my passion was really in property, which is where I started at 18 and invested in my first property. And I was building my way up. So I went from one property to another and eventually I had four and started thinking, okay, now how can I actually develop a company that's focused on property development? But this is interesting insight into the mind of a young entrepreneur. At your age then, you said you did 17 countries, plus you started a business. A lot of people at that age have been thinking, okay, I want to do another 17 or perhaps another 27 countries. I mean, I, weren't you thinking like that at all? Um, I think I was really ready to get involved in, um, in the working world. Um, you know, traveling can be tiring as well, especially when you're on such a low budget, you're barely eating two meals a day um, and you're sleeping in hostels and it's, it's not the most comfortable thing. It's very good to stimulate the mind, but you do get tired of it. Um, and, you know, I needed to come home and study. I needed to, um, you know, get a foundation for business. So I went on and studied um, accounting at Monash University, which I think gave me a really good uh, foundation for, for launching into a business career. And then you studied and then along came Propertuity. I assume that was your big idea. Yeah. Well, yeah, my first building was um, Arts on Main, and that uh, kind of became the catalyst for uh, the start of both Propertuity, which is the development company, as well as Maboneng, which is the neighborhood um, that we've now um, expanded into. After having developed Arts on Main, we started thinking about a much bigger idea of um, building an entire neighborhood. Um, so, What gave you the idea in the first place as an entrepreneur? I mean, surely you're doing pretty well with the laundries and what have you. Yeah. So um, I was living in a converted factory space um, on the other side of, of town in Mill Park. 
And um, in living in that space, I identified that uh, old factory spaces had the potential to become new live and work spaces. Um, and also that there was um, a lot of demand for people that wanted to live inside the urban uh, part of Johannesburg. So at that stage, there was very little on the market. And I thought, um, along with my architect, Enrico de Foncia, we started thinking about um, the idea of doing our own uh, large-scale development, not just one unit, but growing it into a, a, a full-on community. How old were you then? And what was it like going to people and saying, you know, listen, yeah. I want to do this and that? So at that stage, I think I was 23. 23. Um, and initially, people thought I was absolutely crazy. I mean. <laughs> Um, you know, downtown Joburg was completely out of, uh, out of bounds then. Um, and particularly the area that I had um, identified as an opportunity, which was previously called city and suburban and kind of crossing over into Jeppistown, was completely a no-go zone. It was uh, largely vacant um, and just really looked like an industrial wasteland. So when I took people there for meetings and tried to sell them a lot of the meetings, they just thought I was, um, thought I was mad. But uh, Luckily, early on, I got William Kentridge um, on board, mm -hmm. and he's uh, South Africa's most prominent mm. um, artist. And uh, after he committed to the project, people started seeing that there may be um, you know, a workspace for themselves there or a living space for themselves there, and kind of snowball effect started to happen. And uh, can you remember your first days when you opened your business, thinking, well, this is the rest of my life unfolding? What was it like? I mean, um, early on, I moved my office onto site. So during construction, my office was there and I was fully committed. And then when the building was completed, I actually built an apartment for myself um, in the building and was living there. So I was very much um, entrenched uh, in the neighborhood from early on. And really, I was focused on turning it into the success that I, that I knew it should be. And what about capital? Again, your age was against you there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people were so, very skeptical. So really, early on in my business career, first in my, in my laundry business and then um, later on in, in my property business, um, I was uh, very fortunate to have um, an international financier back me. Um, so without, without that investment, none of it would have been possible. Um, but I think that I proved early on to, to him and his organization that I had the, um, you know, the necessary skills to make a big business work. And um, was it scary? Were there rough times in those early days? Definitely. I mean. Um, you know, early on, it was a case of changing people's perception. Um, I had a lot against me. I mean, people hadn't been to the city, many people, for 20 years. I mean, there were 25-year-olds that had never been to the city. Um, so it was coming off a really, really low base, and I had to change those perceptions, which now we've come some way to doing. I mean, there's still a long way to go. Um, but I would say that was the biggest challenge, was just changing people's mindsets and allowing them to identify that change was... Um, on its way. Okay, Jonathan Liebman, young entrepreneur. We're going to talk a lot more about the regeneration of this great city of Johannesburg in the second half. We're going to a short commercial break. When we return, we found out more about the Maboneng precinct. <laughs> 